AI Table Complete Review, AI Table, AI Review. In this video, I'm going to show you how to run an amazing CRM database platform and add all of your workspace members in this and have the greatest work ethic possible because I'm going to be showing you one of the greatest platforms out there that compete with the greats like monday.com and Trello. Okay, this platform is called AI Table and we're going to be talking about its robust working schemes, components, nodes, and all the great features that that it has so please stay tuned now to start things off let's discuss what actually is ai table all right so ai table is basically a software that was created totally for ai based purposes and what this software does is it helps you run an incredible crm platform for any type of business you have it could be a small scale business you could be a solo proprietor or maybe even a medium or enterprise scaled business when it comes to the pricing the pricing is impeccable because first of all it has a free plan that i'm currently on right now which is really incredible right but even for the other plans that it gives you it's extremely affordable okay i will explain why you need it and all the benefits and how to use it so this is what ai tables general outlook looks like okay on the left hand side you can clearly see we have a toolbar over here which will give us our spaces now a space is something where you can find a table that you're going to add your database or competence in then under here we have the workbench where mainly most of the work is done then you have contacts where you can invite people into your workspace then you have templates templates are things that you can add in your workbench in the form of databases and then finally you have the settings that you can use to manage your AI table all right who is you know mainly gonna use AI table you know who is AI table mainly for although it is an incredible platform some of its features aren't the greatest for enterprises and I'm gonna be talking about those features right now as I explain the features I'm gonna be explaining why this feature is not good for enterprises and sole proprietors all right so first of all we talked about the spaces section all right you can create new spaces as you go as you can see, I've, I've created like four spaces over here. You have the limit of creating 10. So if you want to create a new space, just click on create a new space and enter any space name that you want. Click on OK, and that will create a space for you. Now, once you've created a space, your space is going to look pretty empty. OK, so this is a new space that I created recently. And once I click on it, you're going to see that it's empty. There's nothing in it. So what are we going to do over here? What we're going to do is we're going to add a data sheet in this. OK. And to add a data sheet, we're just going to call this data sheet tasks. Okay. So once I call this tasks, I'm going to open it up. And as you can see, it's going to create a table for me. So I'm going to call this task coding. Then I'm going to call this task uh, developing. And I'm going to call this task coloring. Okay. And you can actually add in options. Okay. So I'm going to add an option called a yes. I'm going to add an option called no. Okay. So a person can choose yes or no. And, uh, you know, you can do the same with all of this and keep going on. And then there's attachments. Attachments are something that you can attach to your workspace to let the people in your workspace know on how your, um, you know, how they're supposed to work on this. So I'm just going to attach a random image right now just to give you an example of if someone comes and clicks on the table, what are they going to see? All right. So these are basically how you're going to create data sheets. Now, moving on from data sheets, you can also add in more data sheets over here. But with data sheets, you can add new forms. You can add a whole new dashboard, new automations, new AI agents, and a whole lot more. So let's go ahead and first of all, add a dashboard. Now, a dashboard is a place which will allow you to get a proper, you could say, summarized analytical sense of all of your space okay your whole space will have a lot of components in it but your dashboard will go ahead and summarize all those components so you're just going to need to download some of these widgets okay so you can install the chart you can install a summary and uh, you know that basically allows you to get summarized so look at that pretty incredible right then you can move on to add new forms let's say i'm going to add a new form in task and uh, yeah there we're going to go so that's going to create a form right here. 
So these things on the left hand side that I've added, these are called nodes. Okay, this is a good component of AI table because these nodes are what runs your whole space. Okay, then moving on, what we're going to be talking about is the different views that a person can get when they're in the space. Okay, so the different views that you can get are totally related to your database. So I'm going to come over to my database over here. And now that we're in our database, this is what your default view will look like. And it's just going to be called database, right? There's a lot of other views that you can get. So there's the grid view, gallery, Kanban, Gantt, calendar, architecture, and a whole lot more. So with the difference of all these views, you can get a whole lot better where, where you have different categories and niches to work on. So let's say I'm going to go on this form view. Now this form view has a bulk form of information and description, and I can add information and delete information in bulk. Same goes with grid view. Grid view is a lot like the form view, but the grid view gives you more information than form view. Okay. It, get, it gets more into the inward details, right? Then you have the gallery view where you can get these small cards, which gives you the essential and very brief information, but information that you are actually looking for and information that you actually want. Okay. That's what you get in gallery view because it gives you these small cards. Then moving on, you have the Gantt view. Now the Gantt view is a horizontal chart. Okay. And in this horizontal chart, you can get a very good idea and sense of all the projects that are pending and you can get a good sense of the timeline that they're going to be prolonged on. You can also see which person has been assigned that project and a whole lot more. Then moving on, we have the calendar view. The calendar view basically allows you to schedule different things with different dates because it gives you a proper outlook on the different views and you can actually assign people on different dates and even people in your workspace, they can get a clear and good idea of how things are supposed to work because they can see the deadlines in the calendar view. Now, last but not least is the architecture view. Now, architecture view is a bit complicated because it works like a sales pipe. Line. Okay, you're going to basically create a hierarchy. So let's say I'm going to create a hierarchy of all these names over here. So I'm going to add all these people under each other. Okay. And you can just add them side by side like this as well. I'm going to add this person down here. Then I'm going to add Benjamin under Fiona, Ian under Abby. And just like this, you can basically create a whole pipeline of hierarchies. You know, who's above, who's below. And people can actually come here and check how things work. You can also work on the styles, you know, add their work emails, job titles, and a whole lot more. So this is a pretty helpful and useful feature for myself. Moving on in spaces, what you can do further on is join someone. Okay. So as you can see, I've joined this workspace because a person invited me into this workspace. Now I can automatically leave this workspace from here or I can delete my own workspace as well if I want to. So if you want to delete your own workspace, you're going to come here and click on settings. And once you're over here, you're going to click on settings again and you can delete your workspace. Pretty incredible, right? Now, moving on, what you can do is you can go into contacts and there's two things that you can do in your contact section. So the first thing that you can do is invite people. Okay. So as you can see, I've invited this person over here. So to invite a person, you're going to click invite up here. So you can either send them a link that they can join through, or you can invite via their email. So as you can see, this person I've invited via their email, but you can send them a link and it's much easier to join through that in my opinion. And then moving on, you can actually make them a sub administrator of your board as well once they join. So pretty nice and pretty incredible. Now, as you can see, we have a whole data sheet open in front of us that I made by myself. Now in this data sheet, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be morphing around with the records that we have. So first of all, in this data sheet that let's actually go ahead and add a different type of record. So if you want to add a record, you're going to go ahead and click on insert. And as you can see, it inserts a whole record into it. So you can give it a different name. You can give it a certain manager. So let's say I have uh, this manager over here. I'm going to add it. Then you have different phases. Let's say it's in the planning phase. You have the start date. Let's say I'm going to keep this the start date. Then you have the end date that I'm going to keep over here. You can also change different categories. Let's say I'm going to go with software development. And that is how you create a, a proper record. Now, once the record is created, you can see over here 
that it's properly showing on the database table as well. Now, what you can do is you can actually go ahead and edit it more. OK, so if you want to go ahead and change the different updated settings, you can click on. OK, and click on different aspects. So let's say I'm going to go ahead and change the name to test one. OK, so you can just change it like that. You can also change the manager by just clicking over here and then just naming a new manager like this. All right. Same goes with the other different fields that you have. So look at this. You can just edit the fields in different and more efficient ways when it comes to using records. OK, then moving on, you can also add more fields over here. So let's say I'm going to add a field name called, uh, let's say, invoice. OK, so once we've added this field name, you can actually choose a field type. So let's say this field type is currency. OK, obviously, because it's an invoice, you're going to keep a symbol for it. I'm going to keep it in dollars. I'm going to keep the default alignment and precision by one whole dollar. Then what you're going to do is you're going to click on OK and look at that. It adds an invoice. And what you can do is you can actually give it different types of currencies and numbers. So let's say I'm going to keep nine dollars for this record that we have over here. So that is basically how you're going to be, you know, adding a record, changing the settings of a record and then adding fields and different columns and then changing those fields. So, you know, if we have this field over here, you can click on it, change all of its uh, namings and settings. And there's other settings for this as well, where you can give different field descriptions. OK, so you can let people know what this field is and how it really works. And obviously, if you want to go ahead and add more fields, just click on plus and it will give you the different field types and field types can vary from different things. So you have single line text, select multi text, date, attachment, whatever you want. Those are all the fields that are going to be available for you. Moving on, you can also go ahead and hide different fields for yourself. So let's say I'm going to click on hide fields and from hide fields. I want to hide the invoice field I created and the long text field. And look at that. It automatically hides all of them, but I can obviously unhide them as well by clicking on this and look at that. So this is a pr pretty hefty and easy feature as well because it allows you to keep your workspace clean and more precise according to what you want. And moving on, if you want to find something quickly, you can also filter things. So let's say I'm going to add a filter. It's basically a type of a mini automation. So when the project name is let's say um, John, when the product name is John, we're going to add a filter to it as well. So whenever the product name is John, they're going to appear over here. All right. So let me just delete that. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn this filter off for now. I'm going to make a field. I'm going to give the product name John. And you're going to see that only this will appear now. Look at that. So that's how you can add filters and actually filter out different things from your table as well. You know, if you have a long table with a lot of details in it, you can fish out specific records inside it. OK, and moving on, you can also group all of your fields together. So let's say I want to group the project management field al alone and then I want to need pick a new field like end date. I'm going to pick the end date field like this and look at that. Now we have a project management field and then we have the end date field. So this is how you can, you know, create different groups of different fields. So you have a proper insight of how the different categories in your tables niche work. OK, then moving on, you can also disable these fields by just clicking on, uh, you know, the certain areas you want to go with and then deleting them. Then we have the copilot feature as well. Now, what copilot is, it's basically an AI agent that you can actually ask a lot of help for. So let's say I'm going to ask it, how do I delete record? OK, I'm going to click on send. And once you click on send, there you go. So it easily goes ahead and gives you all the ways you can delete a record or you can even ask it to group fields with, let's say, a project phase. OK, 
and we're going to click on that and Copilot would obviously let us know. Okay, so it's going to give you all the steps where you can group all the fields. So Copilot is basically your AI tables chat GPT. Okay, it's basically your AI that you can use seamlessly and endlessly. And also we have the automation feature, which goes ahead and allows us to add different automations. Okay. So let's say I'm going to go ahead into creating a new automation In automations, you're obviously going to add your triggers. So let's say if a record is created, okay, then once a record is created, what we're going to do is we're going to go to then, and it could be send mails. And you could obviously go into sending mails over here and you're going to make sure to configure yourself. Okay. You're going to add in your email and all the different things that it asks you, or you could also go ahead to send message to Slack. You could go to send a web request. These are the different actions that you can carry out when you're using a proper automation. Okay. And, uh, just make sure to verify all the things they ask you. And once you do all that, that obviously sets up an automation for you that you can enable and start using right away because it saves you a lot of time. Now, moving on, one last thing that I would like to discuss is obviously going ahead and updating and also deleting your records. So once we have a record added, some people would you know, rather like to delete it. So to delete a record, what you're going to do is you're going to right click on it and you're going to come down here to delete record, which it deletes. You can also archive a record, which you can bring back later on, but deleting is much more precise and easier. So just click on delete and that should do the work for you. Plus moving on when it comes to updating again, as I told you before, just double click on the field you want to update and you can update it into any text you want to change it to. So that's how all of the datasheet morphing works. And that is how we're supposed to go ahead and edit all the fields and use all the features that are given to us in our data sheets. Moving on, what you can do is you can also use the templates that AI table has provided you. Now, the reason I'm talking about the templates is because of its incredible robustness. Now, do know this, that all these features that you're seeing in front of you, if you want to go ahead and use this, please do make sure to check the link down in the description below to get a 10% discount on AI table right now. Okay. So in context of the pricing, let's also go ahead and discuss the AI table pricing. Now, here are the pricings for AI table. First of all, there's the free plan, which obviously I was using and you saw how incredibly it works with all the features that there are to show pretty nice right then moving on you have the team plan which is twenty dollars the business plan which is forty five dollars and the enterprise scale plan now all these plans are very incredible with the greatest amount of features and if you want to get them again check the link in the description below so you can get a 10 percent discount on all of these for life okay and you can also see their proper you know scaling of features and pricing with each other so please do make sure to check it out on their website but that's the main idea of AI table. Now, I would definitely urge users like you to use AI table because it's great for all your small term or medium term businesses out there. It would be incredible for you and your work can zoom off in the skies very easily. Now, please do make sure to sign up and register with this program using the link in the description below. And please do make sure to like, subscribe and turn on bell notification for more videos in the future.